hello my soccer universe. Well, good that I got this Sevilla jersey <laughs> during this uh, past season. And yes, it's a fake. Still, better to have it than not see my Champions League. I have at least fourth one finalist uh, jersey. Um, what a weird game that was yesterday. Uh, it was, first of all, it was actually much better than I expected to be. I was close-ish. Uh, it would have taken my wife to say, put the kids to bed that I probably would not have watched this game because I expected a dreary uh, kind of nil-nil game um, because United is laggy, Sevilla, um, they play well but it's kind of, you know, um, it's tedious in a way. Uh, it, it, they completely, it was good yesterday, it was a good game. Uh, I expected at most a 1-0 win, I didn't expect that there will be three goals scored. I also did not necessarily expect, although the Copenhagen game was already a little bit uh, pointing that way, that um, Manchester United will waste that many chances. I mean, both halves, uh, it, it was very similar halves to, to be honest, uh, where United came out storming. And first things first, United, I don't get it why they have to play in their new away jerseys. Is it just because of the black socks of Sevilla uh, that United doesn't want to play in red, black and then maybe white socks? I mean, the black socks for Sevilla are anyway a uh, ridiculous part, but I think this is for historical reasons, because I, I remember uh, Valencia when they had their 100 year uh, jersey, they played in a similar style and uh, Spain has always black, uh, traditionally always had black socks as well. So there's something in Spain with black socks um, that escapes me. But come on, come on, United. Do you need to, can't you just play in red for once? I mean, same thing against Lusk and Lusk was playing all white and you're playing all black. Um, put on the black shorts, put on the black socks. Uh, or white socks. Uh, it just seemed ridiculous, and uh, that jersey, you know, I'm not gonna make another review for for, for it. But I need to say the coloring. I, I don't even know what color. It is. I mean, there was a, a darkish green, but is it gray? Is it brown? Whatever. And then all the pad patterning on there. Uh, nah, it was visually not pleasing. The game itself was good, but visually it was not a pleasing game to watch. As I said, United started out strong uh, and Sevilla looked not only nervous, but a bit out, out, out of sorts. And, you know, if you compare player by player, in, in a way, I would definitely say that um, United would have the better team. Uh, but I think the difference is that Sevilla has already a working team. But uh, it didn't all seem that way uh, at the beginning. And... They got an early penalty, again a penal, uh, pen -pen penalty, when uh, Rashford was uh, really taken down in the box. It was maybe after he took his shot, but still, it was a, a rather rough challenge. Bruno Fernandes on the rebound could have scored, but then gets the penalty. Bruno Fernandes stood up and yeah, makes his jump penalty to make it 1-0. It was very well taken penalty, I have to say, but I miss those times. And that was just a straight, uh, you know, four or five step run up and you uh, put the ball in the net. I actually would like there it should be no jumping and needs to be a fluid movement, not all this stuttering and whatever. Um, but hey, uh, as long as it's legal, I think Bruno Fernandes is one of the best penalty takers around for sure. And then I think there was another chance uh, by Rashford, I think uh, lay, laid on Martial. I mean, shooting left and right. I mean, not big chances, but I had the feeling that United had well control of the game. It took around 20 minutes until Sevilla kind of um, got back the con con control with their, again, short passes weaving themselves through. And uh, through such a movement actually came the equalizer for Sevilla, which at the time was... Um, you know, it was not totally against the run of play, but it was a little bit surprising that it came uh, when Ocampos gets the ball, he gets past Lindelof, Van Pisaka uh, does not keep track of Reguilón, who makes a really nice pass, who I thought will be intercepted. Nope, nothing like that. And Suso, Suso of all players, um, on the other end uh, of the box, just needs to tap it in. A really beautifully played goal. And... Um, May I express my love for Suso again? When he was at Milan, um, there was a time when I really thought he's by far the best player 
of uh, Milan. Um, he had a rough start at Sevilla, but what I really, really, really like, like about him, he is bucking the trend. He is wearing loose shirts. Totally love that one. I mean, every shirt that he wears looks too big on him. Uh, it reminds me of a bygone era. Uh, so good on that. Um, United then again had a few more chances, but you know, uh, at that moment then it was even up until halftime. And when the halftime started, I think for about 10 seconds, Sevilla was there and then it was all United. For the next 10, 15 minutes, United came and knocked in. Um, mainly Martial, who had three big chances. Then there was um, uh, a one by Bruno Fernandes. I think Rashford got in on the extra air as well. And it was all either a goalkeeper safe and again, uh, Bruno, although he has Bono on the back, and many U2 references probably all over the place, either saving or the severe defense really being tight and blocking the shots. It reminded me of playoff hockey in, in a way. You could see that they're working for, for each other, uh, but you could also see that United really has a problem converting their, their chances, especially the two where um, Martial was basically alone in front of the goal, goalkeeper and he just makes two leg saves within a minute. Uh, must have been frustrating. We have this um, saying in German that I almost wanted to put as a title for this video, but I think it would be too lengthy. The goals that you uh, don't make yourself, you end up conceding. Die Tore, die man macht, die man nicht schießt, bekommt man. It's in German. Uh, it really... Is, I, I don't think there's much to it, but I felt, yeah, United could regret that. And yes, after 15 minutes or so, um, United didn't have all that pressure anymore. And I also saw that um, United were not making any changes to get some fresh blood in there. Um, and Sevilla did make the changes. Um, right at the end of this pressure period, 56 minutes, El Haddadi came on for Ocampos, who was not very happy, happy about that. Uh, and Enes, uh, De Jong came on for Eneziri. That changed the game a little bit. It gave a little bit more stability to uh, Sevilla, who then could hold um, Manchester United a little bit more at play. Still not having great chances. I still thought that United looked over a little, little bit better, but what uh, Sevilla was very adept at doing is to figure out the weaknesses and the weak of United, and the weakness of United is the backline. Um, and the decider came when you could argue all four of them back there were sleeping. Williams, who I think had a pretty rough game. Uh, I think he was the one player of United that clearly was not uh, on the same level as, as as the rest of them. He kind of let um, Navas make a cross freely and then if you watch the replay, this is so damning. Van Bissaka is right there where Luke de Jong is. Uh, and both Maguire and Lindelof have only eye for, for the ball but no awareness of what's hap 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 happening on the back. Luke de Jong runs in gets free of Van Bissaka, who's just standing there also watching the ball and neither of them is picking picking him up and it was a very easy finish for Luke de Jong to make it 2-1 and yeah finally um, Sosha decided maybe I should bring on a few players uh, in the 87th minute very very late um, he made his first substitution he brought on then Igalo uh, really really late there was not really a chance Sevilla played at home and whenever Sevilla played in a semi-final in the Europa League, they won it. And I, when they beat Roma, I thought this might, that, that might happen again. Who they will face will be decided this evening between Inter and Schachter. And although I think Inter are the favorites, and I honestly, uh, there, there is the other thing that's really surprised me per person. I thought, I really want to see an Inter against Manchester United final because of the many United players that are playing at Inter. And especially for Lukaku getting a little bit of a revenge on United. But then Sevilla scores the first goal and I find myself celebrating. I thought I'm totally neutral in this game. I was uh, just one point to join. No, at the end, ends up I was more for Sevilla. That was interesting to me to say. Uh, to see. I, I, I surprised myself. So I assume today, although I also think uh, Inter would probably deserve going into, into the final, Schachter also. And I have a feeling, I have this gut feeling that Schachter will meet Sevilla in the final. That might be a really 
interesting if Shakhtar goes in because Shakhtar's Brazilian forwards I really like that I mean don't get wrong I'm a Milan fan I will never actively cheer for Inter but I, there is something to like about this Inter team I, I really like Lukaku I really like Barella so let's see how this will be going anyway let me know what you thought about this game uh, yesterday um, evening Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!